finally here. Hello, mate. It's you, the start of the journey. You excited? I'm very excited. We're both wearing matching blue. <laughs> <laughs> right, guys. Welcome back to another episode. Today, we're walking the, down the southwest coastal path. We've got four days, or four nights, five days, worth of hiking down some of the most extreme parts of the British coastline. Dan's with me. Hi, uh, you all right, guys? So join us on this epic adventure. So we didn't make it far. How many miles have we gone so far, Dan? 0 0.2. And we're at a weather spoons in my head. Cheers. Dan, get in there. Get in there. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so this is the official start of a southwest coast path. Here we go. That's the wrong path. Okay, that's the wrong path, mate. You're going the wrong way. Right, go! Southwest coast path that way. And here you have a, a statue. The whole walk is 630 miles long. We're here and we're going to be making all the way down as far as we can get. So there we go. First steps. Into the unknown. Into the unknown. There's those shells, I was following the shells in the <laughs> So this is the first part of real track uphill. Bags are feeling heavy already. But there's no going back now. Yeah, well, I made a big mistake in bringing the wrong shoes. I bought my German paratrooper boots and they started rubbing straight away. So I've switched to my backup shoe, which is the Croc. So let's see how the walk treats my feet and these. Hopefully I won't get a twisted ankle. So we've walked all the way down from the sea level, all the way up to this point, and you can get a beautiful view of over at Wales. We're hot. Very hot. Right, top of the mountain. Um, so we've done the climb, this is probably the, one of the highest points and then we should start to descend. To um, about five, six miles in now. Um, so about another three before our first pit stop. Uh, probably freshen up, have a couple of beers, get some fluids in, um, and then we push on for the next five miles, but we'll keep you guys updated. Oh, sweat in my eye. Oh. So we've come to another peak and we can turn around the corner now and see a little bit of the landscape that we're going to be walking along in the next couple of hours well for the rest of the, the day really so yeah check this check this view out so behind me is the longest stretch of woodland along the coast in Britain and it stretches on as far as the eye can see mostly oak if you look over here I'll zoom in you see a little white building right at the end there. We're going to be camping just somewhere along the coast there. Down here you've got Porlock Weir, Porlock Weir, and that's where we're headed to now. So let's get down this hill. So we're walking into Porlock now, which is a fairly medium-sized town. Dan is desperate for a pint, so uh, we're going to try and quickly get into a pub before he collapses.
<laughs> so we're at the last pub of the day we've traveled about 8.9 miles um we're just gonna have a couple of drinks here do our final stretch which is about 3.5 miles left to go um then we're gonna set up camp chuck some sausages on the um on the grill and then have a few more have a nice bottle of wine actually to settle in for the evening but both looking forward to it last stint now nearly there cheers guys Ah, oh, so we're off again, out into the walls of the unknown, try and make it to camp before it gets dark. We've got, meant to, uh, the sun's meant to set at around half eight, so we've got to try and walk four miles before it gets eight o'clock, and it's seven o'clock now. So we'll probably be walking in the dark, but we've got head torches, and we roughly know where we're going. So, yeah, let's see where this trail takes us. Foundation, foundations take care of you. So this part of the coastal trail has a bit of an interesting story. We're about to go through a tunnel and this tunnel was made by a woman who owned the manor house up on the hill and she wanted to create a route the workers who are working on the mansion to be completely hidden from the house so she made a series of tunnels just to try and hide the scumbag filth from the view of the house here's the tunnel Pretty cool. Here is a scumbag now. Let me view the house. No, no, you'll hide in the tunnels where no, you belong. No, I want to see the house. No, you're a scumbag. You stay in these tunnels. You see the house. <laughs> We're coming up to Colborne now, and this is where they've got the world's, not the world's smallest, but Britain or English, England's smallest church. You've got this building here, it's obviously occupied, you've got the church down there. I think we can go this way. Um, so apparently the steeple of this church was uh, taken from a decrepit church up on the top of the hill and moved down to here. Because you can see here it doesn't look quite right kind of looks like they just cut a bit and stuck it on. So here's the church, all the graves down here. Here's the leper window. Here's the leper window, Dan. This is the window that all the people with leprosy that were sent to live right out here along the coast they would come and they would look through here at the congregation peering in trying to get a bit of the god's word for an early death right we've got some we've got some distance we've got some miles ahead of us so we're gonna carry on along the trail and hopefully get to the camp spot before nightfall
So we've made our way down, hundreds of meters down to the sea level, and we found the old guy's shack. Oh look, somebody's busted the door open. Cleared out all of his stuff as well. Last time we were here, we had all, we had all of his shelves up. Yeah, look, they cleared out everything. Still some wood left there. Some old bits. Oh, there's a bat. Oh, Jesus, do you see that? Yeah. Old saw blade, old frying pan, some candles. There's the bat up there, look. Lapping about. Now oh, that's sad. Probably had a secret little container bit under there. What was he having that bottle over there? This one? No. Or that one over there? Looks like an old one he's dug up. At least it's still standing. So they've got the camp set up now, just having a cup of wine. Dan's cooking some sausages. Got the pasta on the go. I'm just gonna unwind and just relax now because we've been walking for a hell of a long, hell of a long time. So cheers, that's the end of day one. We'll see you in the morning. Good morning. Quite a relaxed evening last night. Managed to get a, quite a few hours sleep. I'm just gonna go and take the washing to wash it up. We've got the whole coastline to ourselves. Lovely sunrise over there. Let's get these pots washed up and I'm gonna get some coffee on. Day two and we're back on the trail. So we now have to walk back up this big hill, get the altitude again, and then it's 10 miles to Linton. Well, around about six and a half, but we'll see where we camp tonight anyway. So yeah, let's join us on day two, here we go. here at the sisters fountain and it's a beautiful sp spot to stop with it's making up some coffee I'll come and show you the the well or the fountain or whatever you want to call it just a gentle trickle coming out of it in a minute So we've been walking now for around four or five miles. We haven't had a proper breakfast yet. We're both starving and we're coming up to a pub. So excited. I'm gonna have fish and chips. I'm gonna have maybe like a fruit cider just to refresh me. Oh, honestly, I cannot wait. So we're at the pub. I'm drinking a Rattler, mango flavour. Dan's got a kiwi and lime, or melt, 4%. I feel so good to sit down. Down there is Linton, 
and above is Lynmouth. Or vice versa. Made it to Lin uh, Lynmouth. Another steep track down. Take a look at this lovely little seaside town. What do you want to do now, Dan? Um, I think we'll get some ice cream from the seaside town and then go to the pub. Yeah. Beer. Beer. So playing a bit of mini golf now. Dan's up for the first go. Right down the middle. Way off. <laughs> nice. So this is the famous uh, hillside train. And there's the queue. And we're not waiting in the queue. Do you reckon they have a fast track? You yeah, pay for you pay fast, fast track. track. Yeah. Or as I like to call it, white privilege. <laughs> oh, yeah, as a joke. Yeah. Up the path we go. And there's the... Uh... The uh, rescue lifeguard. Coast guard. Going off. The rail. Jesus. <laughs> Not one of the waves. <laughs> Yes, yeah, it's advice that everybody You love the dirt, you Oh, look, shoes. Oh, second hand shop. It's out of Linton and Lynmouth now. We're heading along the coastal path again, and it's a pretty crazy view we've got ahead of us. So, this is called Valley of the Rocks. Mountain goats everywhere. We have nowhere to camp. We're really see tired. Some trees over there. We see some trees over there. We're gonna head up for that point. Hopefully, camp somewhere close by. But this is just fantastic. Look at this. We've been trying to find a place to camp. We've just found this pit called Croc Pits, and we're gonna try and find somewhere to hang up our hammocks. Because it's the only flat ground, the only, only bit where we can sort of get off the footpath and hang up our hammocks. Anyway, let's go and find somewhere. It's getting late. So, by random coincidence, we have found our literal camp. Walking sticks left for us. Thank God. And look at this view. Right, let's get camp set up. The camp set up now. The hammock's over there, overlooking the spectacular view. I'm just opening a can of hot dogs with my Leatherman. Dan's getting the condiments ready. We've got pot noodles, buns, popcorn, and wine gums. Bellissimo. Morning, Dan. Did you sleep okay? Yeah, I did actually. What a lovely view of the sea. It was very windy last night. Our chairs blew onto the fire, but luckily they're both okay. So we've got an awful breakfast of the world's worst hot dogs and a bun each. We've got a five mile walk to the nearest shop or pub. So, 
Yeah, it's gonna be a fun day. They were all packed up now. That's where we had the tarp. Bags are packed and we're ready for day three. Oh, it's gonna be a steep one again, I think. Another beautiful day on the trail. We're walking down now to the Hunter's Inn, hoping it's gonna be open. It's a beautiful field we're crossing. We're gonna go down now into a pristine valley. That was good fun. Just had a cake and some coffee at the Hunter's Inn. Highly recommend. Now we're gonna head off. Dan's wearing his fuckboy uniform. <laughs> we're gonna go check out this river, see if it's deep enough to have a swim in, cause Dan, Dan just stinks. <laughs> now he's got his pits open, gonna have to be downwind of that all day. But yeah, okay, the path continues. Not pass. <laughs> Old Bilbo Barrett over here. <laughs> Uh, I can't swim in that. Made it up, made it up to the top of the hill, but look, my legs have done though. And check out this uh, campsite. How's that for a view? Feel strong today. Aim is to get to Ulvacoom. It's 10 miles away from where we are now, and we've already done five miles so I don't know if we have to make it but we'll keep going wish us luck just found this I've just found this little slow worm I think it's dead I'm pretending to be dead So we've made up to the top of Hangman's Cairn and we're literally so high up now. I'll climb up this sh shingle. The cairn here. Down there is Coombe Martin. Over in the distance is Ilvercoombe. And we've come all the way over the horizons. We're gonna go down and find, an, find another pub. Oh, so we're finally enjoying a beer after such a long stint. Well, first it was a massive climb, um, sort of from Milestone to, it wasn't Holiday Inn, what was it? Hunting's Inn. And then from there it was just uphill, uphill, over the mountain, following the path, the cliff. And then sheer drop on the other side. <coughs> Once we got there, we know what goes down must come up, so, oh no, <laughs> wrong way round. <laughs> but then we did the climb, and then we've come over, we're in Coo Martin now, and we're finally enjoying the first beer of today. It's been a while, but it's a good stint. Cheers. We're in a lift now. So we've decided to get a hotel room because we're covered in ticks and uh, we need a nice warm bed and a shower. So we've booked the cheapest hotel in Ilvercoom. It was 40... Five pounds. Yeah, 45 pounds a night. So let's go check out the room. Oh, look at this. Nice view of the... So this used to be a hotel for the illegal immigrants. There's one of them there. I'm so happy to be in England. <laughs> I see what the bathroom's like. Just get me out of these boots. Right, we're gonna go have a shower, get cleaned up, have a full tick inspection, check every orifice, orifices. Or a fi. And uh, yeah, see if we've got any clean clothes to put on. I think I've got one t shirt and a pair of pants left. <sighs> Day four. 
and we're heading up to the hotel behind me and get some breakfast at the Witherspoons and then we've got some mackerel fishing booked in for 12. It's obviously a bit overcast, hopefully it won't be too rough to see, but we'll see how we get on. So breakfast has turned up, this is what I've got, eggs benedict with sausage and a hash brown and a coffee and uh, lime cordial. And Dan for breakfast, it's, it's got two strawberry daiquiri cocktails. Pink Jing passion fruit martinis actually. Daiquiris. <laughs> So we've both just ordered each other an alcoholic drink, I'm not telling each other what we've ordered. Oh, here they come now. Here they come now. Is that the same thing? Tea cake. And these are the strawberry daiquiris. Yeah, thank you. Alright. Are these done? Yeah, yeah. How come you feel the same thing? Is this the Captain Morgan's one? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So that was a passion fruit one last time. Okay. Oh, they must all just come in the same glass. It's the same drink again. <laughs> Look, thanks, Dan. Original. No. I've got you rum and a. Uh, you bought yourself one as well? Yeah, it's a deal. It's two oh, for. Okay. I bought you rum and no, ginger beer. Both. I don't want the both. Down it then. <laughs> So we're on the fishing boat now, about to head out. You looking forward to it, Dan? Yeah, very much so. The tide's going out and we're waiting for people so we could be on the bottom soon. We're so close to bottoming out on the, on the bottom. So we had to go quick. Fishing experience. Yeah, mate, I caught a fish. It was a herring, and it was the smallest fish I've ever seen. But we've got a bet on whoever catches the biggest fish or the most fish gets to uh, have the other person buy the round. So, game on. Dan's thinking he's going to win <laughs> that tiny with that tiny, annoying little fish. I won the competition, Simon owes me a beer now, to the spoons I think. Thanks guys. Thank you very much, right, cheers. Take care, nice to meet you. Good fun. Thank you, take cheers. Care. Weatherspoons now. We've been here three times today to keep coming back. Two glasses of wine for five pounds. We can't get any better than that. Dan's in this absolute heaven. Yeah, I'm having the best time. Five pounds for two wines. I'm thinking if we both spent 25 pounds each here, it's 10 rounds. Uh, and that's for a large as well. Yeah. We've got a lovely view here of the golf course. 
along with the pride flag down there, you can see that. Day five and it's the start of the mission home. We've got to get a bus two and a half hours long. So yeah, open top though, double decker. Should be quite fun. So we're on the bus now. Two and a half hours to go. Got down off the seat. I walked the whole entire route with Crocs. And we've made it back to the car. All the stuff that Simon didn't let me bring. Could have done with that cologne. Could have done with this. Well, there we have it, guys. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. We had a blast of a time. Literally one of the best holidays. Think you've ever done so don't forget to like and subscribe we'll see you guys on the next one